Something Chris speaks about is how skill is not just the addition of something, but also the elimination of something. And here the constraint is the players have to dribble around the square using as few dribbles as possible. And this is what I call a Spanish dribble, something players in Spain are very good at, taking as many steps as they can in one dribble. And they're still in control, but the ball just isn't necessarily in their hands the whole time. Now what I'm looking for is an instant recognition of the BDT cue with my hands up to pass me the ball. So I'm looking for them to get me the ball straight away and with one hand. The player in that video could only uh, do it with two hands, but we emphasized making that pass with one hand off the dribble. And that BDT cue can be given any time as they dribble around the square. If you don't give the BDT cue, once they get to the last cone, they're just gonna complete their dribble, push it out and get to the rim for a finish. What you're going to see in this video is I'm not just gonna be standing in one spot and I'm also gonna be connecting with players on either side. So therefore, in that clip, connecting with the far side, that means that they're gonna send that weak side skip. And there I didn't catch the ball because the pass has to come exactly into my target hands. If the pass is not on target directly into my hands, then the players won't get the ball back from me. So we're just emphasizing sending it directly into wherever my targets are. Now you can see me guiding the finishers a little bit. So in that clip, I cut off the player's straight line that led to that counter finish. Here I'm on his hip, so he uses more of that extended finish uh, to score. Now, the BDT cue to pass can be given at any time, not just when the players are dribbling around the squares. It can also be given as the players are driving in uh, and about to go into their finish. So what that means is that they have to have vision of me right up until the moment that they're taking off and finishing at the rim. And I was just being really specific here with where they're passing the ball and also starting to cut. So they'd have to pass the ball to me into my target hands while I'm on the move. Here you can see me giving a perceptual layup cue and it's just such a difference between that and an uncontested finish at the rim. And if I had another coach available, I would have one coach always giving some type of cue on the finish, whether it's taking off their straight line, being on the hip as the primary defender or being a help defender and giving a perceptual layup cue. Then I would have the other coach giving the BDT cues just because it makes it a lot harder for the players if you're by yourself, you can still make it work like I'm doing in this clip, but it means you're just gonna be moving around a little bit more. But it still helps create a great uh, random situation that, and the players really never know what's coming next. This idea came from Chris's perceptual layups, which has already been shared through the immersion platform. And the idea is the same in regard to as the offensive player attacks, the player in the middle will either move to a left or right, curing a decision as to where the offensive player can attack through. And just like the Spanish dribbles, we encourage the same constraint with players attempting to get from the baseline to the half line with as few dribbles as possible. So really pushing the ball out. And then on the way back, once they get to the half, it's the same concept, taking as few dribbles as possible to then finish at the rim. So it's encouraging that push out and players are still in control of the ball, just throwing it out ahead of them great way that players can work on dribble moves and self-discover dribble moves without necessarily having to teach them all the time and you can see a whole array of moves are used here by the player and there you can see some difficulty and you'll see this now as we've loaded this up to a full court gauntlet with three players and sometimes players will lose the ball or maybe even collide with the player giving them the decision and that's okay that's what learning looks like and we will prefer the learning to be difficult in the first instance then at the rim you can see that we've loaded in a last coach to give a perceptual layup decision
there are numerous ways you can progress this, all the loads which you can find at basketballimmersion.com.